Wanderers, welcome to the Wandering Dutchman podcast, brought to you proudly by our friends at the Gaslight. Hi, it's John from the Gaslight. <laughs> Just kidding. But John from the Gaslight is bringing you this episode of the Wandering Dutchman. The Gaslight, located on Historic 4th Street in Huntingburg, is your go-to spot for good food, great pizza, and cold beer. John wanted us to remind you that the Gaslight is also your go-to spot for holiday parties. It doesn't even have to be a holiday party. You can host a team, birthday, or class reunion in the back room. The Gaslight will also help your organization raise funds through pizza fundraisers. And you can't forget about bar catering for your next private event. Give John a call today. Also, if you're looking to make a little vacation, holiday, or even beer money on the side, John would like to talk to you about working at the Gaslight. Inquire today. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman podcast coming to you from the Smoker's Lounge. Here we go. It is the Wandering Dutchman podcast coming to you from Smoker's Lounge. I am Esquire and join there in the middle with no rose-colored glasses, but he's got the turquoise on. Is the turquoise turtle there, Dave? Dave, get it out. Dave. Yeah. Okay, there it is. It's our buddy by way of Richmond, Indiana, David Allen Smoker. David, welcome to the show. Howdy. Sitting across from me with the moustache and the garbage St. Louis Cardinals shirt. It's our buddy with the turtle shelled colored glasses, hailing from Holland, Indiana. Our friend, your friend, and city of Huntingburg's most valuable employee, Zachary David Masoner. Hey. What's up, buddy? Not much, pal. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to just jump into it a little bit here, see what's been going on. And this segment is brought to you by our buddy, Logan Clark and Lights by Logan. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Wait a minute. It's only October. But our buddy Logan Clark with Lights by Logan wants you to be in the Christmas spirit this year by decorating your home with lights and other holiday decorations. Let Lights by Logan take the pain out of the holiday decorating and let them do all the work for you. From install to taking down, they do it all. The schedule is filling up fast as Logan and crew service Dubois and the surrounding counties. Give Logan of Lights by Logan a call today at 812-631-4700. What's up? Nothing. You? Not a thing. <laughs> I was just telling the audience before we started that how like wicked depressed I've been watching TikTok. I've been on Halene Talk. It's tough. It is bad, bro. What's that one? The Hurricane. Like Chimney Rock, North Carolina, and, and Asheville, and it's like... Holly? I thought it was H-E-L. It's Helene. Oh. Hurricane Helene. Yeah. But yeah, dude, that's uh, that's what I was telling these guys. Like, they said something, like in Chimney Rock, they had a... Uh, now, of course, this is on the internet, so I don't know the credit. It's all true. Of this. Yeah. Sure. It's all true. <laughs> but they said they held, like, a town meeting, and I guess it, it's turning into, like, an eminent domain type thing, where they're just going to cease all rescues and just do whatever they got to do to get in and out, take a bulldozer and just flatten her down to where they could get in and start over. But, uh, yeah, there's like, yeah, they're doing the whole like red X's and stuff on houses and numbers and stuff with like dead people. Cause like, it's still climbing and yeah, they, missing and everything. It's I think terrible. at one point they said shortly thereafter about a thousand missing, but that's obviously mm -hmm. not going to be right. And that's in North Carolina? Yeah. Yeah, Asheville. Yeah. Like, you've seen an overhead video of a, I'm assuming it would be, like, from a, this is stupid, but, like, a, a, a satellite or, like, a stealth bomber or some sort of extremely. <laughs> I hope our tax dollars ain't going to stealth well, bomber we did, to fly well, we did, take photos. Well, we did send uh, nine, was it $9.8 billion to, uh, what was it, Israel or somebody? We just spent a. Uh, We've been giving Ukraine a lot of money. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. 
I guess I thought that thing came from like the Gulf into it did. Florida. It did. it did, but then it got up onto that up in the mountains and just hung. Really? Yeah. I and did. they had they 20, had, 24, 26 inches of rain. But they had had gosh. a bunch of rain prior to that. Yeah. There was like a, mm-hmm. a a weather system that kind of set in and been saturating them. What I had said though, not not, not a stealth bomber, but like a satellite vid- footage of a f- picture of of a, the area at night. Oh, I saw and that. It said it's wild to see where Helen Helene or Helene went up through there because it's this when it made landfall it was a cat 4 Katrina was a cat 3 this is a cat 4 and it was like 480 some miles wide that's what made it unique was all the black. size like of you it. can see the major cities everywhere with their big you've lights. not seen that picture it's nutty i'll try to find it's it a, I've, uh, I guess, I didn't realize that was still going. I thought that was last week yet. It was, Ooh. but it, like it's still like Ash. The recovery. Build- he, what he's talking about is the recovery efforts and the rebuilding efforts. Like today's date in real time that. is Thursday, October the third. On I seen a video of September 29th, which would have been what? I'm not very good at math, but that's like what five days ago. And the water in the Biltmore Village. Now I've heard somebody tell me what is Biltmore. I've heard somebody else. That's that. So the Biltmore that. Mansion, giant is estate in, is built in, by uh, the Vanderbilts, is in uh, Asheville, and it's like a huge. It's a it's a thing. It's just a huge mansion, and there's you like, would hate them, Dave, because it represents the parochial parochial uh, monopoly of wealth, colonial nihilism, money, and taking advantage of people. You wouldn't jisms. like them. Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt. Yeah. CNN Anderson Cooper. Right. He so is. The he water. Is like, huh? Didn't he die? No. no I think he's still no. alive. But the water was like gutter high on all these houses. And these rescue dudes were in like, like those inflatable yeah. Navy SEAL boats just kind of like navigating. And Justine and I were just down there, you know, three years ago eating lunch and doing the Biltmore shit. And like we were right in there buying shit in those shops and stuff. And like we recognized, I recognized some of the buildings we were I mean, because they're it's like the Biltmore Village. All these sure. shops and strip malls and all this shit. They all their the fixtures and everything are the same on the outside of the buildings, and hmm. it's just it's well. Crazy. I think they yeah. said you can look it up on Google Maps or the whatever you use for your navigation. And I forty that runs through there is going to be closed for a Six year months minimum. September twenty twenty five, yeah. possibly reopening. And then I was it I I twenty six. There's there's two or three major veins that run up through. I guess mountains. I thought it was Tennessee. I saw a bunch of roads washed out. Those two, yeah, yeah, kind of that whole like almost really like where the Appalachian Trail, like mm-hmm. Helene just hiked the Appalachian Trail yeah. on up, and then it kind of stalled out, and then it Speaking got. Speaking of us. that, did you guys see that that girl? Yeah, forty days, forty days. Yeah, she for, hiked literally a through hiker takes anywhere from seven to nine months. Yeah, to to walk the eight the AT, and this chick did it in forty days, and she did it for like um, empowering young women's, empowering young women, and like I don't know if she was like a big actor. hell half no fury like a woman scorn Unreal. somebody done pissed so her off. It was supposed to take one hundred and eighty days, and she did it in forty. 40. They she, said I she think she was average. averaging like fifty. 50 plus miles was, a day. I thought it was like 70. I thought it was closer to 70. Yeah. Like, was she Ubering? <laughs> she was, I think she had a scooter. She was running know, and man. she would do yeah. like running and walking. So and who said, who said, who's the puss that said it took nine months and then some gal just gets out there? Well, I think it was like an average. Yeah. Like it was a, it's been like a I national think it, average. You can do it between, you can do it like in like five 40 months days. covering, you know, how many. <laughs> Obviously, this days. chick did it in 40 days. A uh, friend of the program, Dr. Brian Blessinger, his dad did it, but he was, he was, days. I don't he think was he a, was a through hiker. He was a though. section hiker because he got sick. He got Lyme disease mm. and damn near died and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Tough spot. I hiked in New Mexico with Dr. Blessinger's dad. I thought you were going to say you hiked the Appalachian Trail. No, in I've been on parts of it, but I've never been in it or like hey, I've never, yeah. Speaking of Israel, did you see what they did with the beepers? Yeah. That is wild. Yeah. Have you seen that? pagers i've uh i've watched a little bit of the news saw chris christopherson died uh oh, we, r.i.p and that's about as deep as i've gotten do you want to take we can take a moment real quick well it sounds like no i mean it's fine i just that's all i've caught in the news can you believe week. it the guy that smoked all the reefer in the world is the one that's still standing right 
<laughs> I think he, well, Johnny Cash was a little bit older, but uh, Waylon and Chris Christopherson are both younger than mm -hmm. Willie Nelson. Yeah, Waylon oh, yeah. died back in 02. I just, it didn't it seem like pretty, it'd be yeah, that long pretty, ago. Pretty good. A little bit or ago. it seems, you know what I mean? Like 02, yeah, yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. he's been gone that long, I guess, yeah. is what I meant to say. Okay, this girl, Kareel Sabi in 2018. Oh, see, this must be, this is stupid. Okay. Th that, that, that stuff might have been, well, maybe it was, uh, an old post or something, but I, it just happened to come up, but it was 41 days set in 2018. Oh, it's just in the news and it happened five years ago. I mean, there you Six go, Dave. Ago. See, it's on the internet, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's right. Fine. But, uh, well, she did good. She did good. Great job for her there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, guys, that's, that's, uh, what about you, Casey? You got anything going other than golf? You're red as a, yeah. Your, uh, just golf. Yeah. Busy. You know, work's been busy, but we'll, you know, no big deal. Nothing. Yeah extravagant things are good yeah i'll tell you a little bit more about uh last weekend when we get into our first topic well hey buddy it's all yours jump on in all right yeah hell yeah hey right. we, did, we did find out uh of course another sign that our marketing works turns out our buddies lights by logan does the lights for our buddy at celebration ice so that oh mark no. And I'm sure Mark hadn't hired him until we ran that episode last yeah. week. Yeah, they had so, no idea for sure. Yeah, we appreciate it. All right, it. guys, so here we go. This is a topic that is mildly embarrassing. Mm. Are you talking about your incontinence again? Well, no. Okay. It does have to do with something with poop. But... Um, so this topic is something that it's it's I'm going to describe to you an event that happened to me that was top five grossest things I've ever done in my life. But oh boy, but it's something that I felt like I just had to do. Like it was something that I had to do. Am I proud of it? No. Do I think I deserve a medal for it? No. Did my kids look at me with some of the most weird expressions that I don't think I've ever seen before? Yes. Didn't blow a cop to get out of a speeding ticket. I did not blow a cop to get out of a speeding <laughs> ticket. No. That wouldn't be one of the top five grossest things. Princeton, did. Indiana. Princeton, Indiana. Okay. Saturday, September, whatever last Saturday was. Okay. Practice field elementary middle school mm -hmm. raining like a son of a bitch hurricane helene we were getting it we were balls deep in it you know and the nice thing about that rain that we got wasn't heavy downpour very nice slow mm -hmm. very appreciative uh we were in princeton just couldn't rub that into tennessee and wow North Carolina. too soon oh shit that, sorry that, uh, and peace. but uh <clears throat> we were sitting at this in the rain uh, brother love and all the families and everybody was in a row of tents as if we were some sort of like homeless community and uh skid row princeton indiana there huddled in with boots and raincoats and umbrellas and trash bag ponchos and whatnots it had come to the time to leave i had broke down my camp and uh herded my children back to my car and it's not really that far of a drive from Princeton back home, about, what, 35, 40 minutes, I guess, if you're really clicking through there. I had to piss. And it wasn't just kind of like a hanging out in the parking lot kind of piss because we were at a school, and there was kids everywhere, and that would have been weird. So I had to go into their facilities, which, unbeknownst to me until we got there, and much to my dismay, was two blue houses, hot boxes, porta johns Entered the port of John to take a piss. Had a urinal on the side. Those are the good ones. Yeah, had a urinal on the side. So then after entering, shut the door and locked it. Turned my body, uh, how many degrees? 90. 90 <laughs> degrees to the side to take a piss. Fished my uh, penis out of my britches. And while doing that, I pulled my pullover shirt up. <laughs> Which, had to get to the zipper. Just, yeah, well, no, I'm an over-the-top guy. Mm, that's right, even higher. So, yeah, I had to really get it over the top, which caused the uh. 
two, not one, but two cellular communication devices made by Steve, Steve Jobs and the Apple people to then drop straight into the blue abyss. <laughs> I didn't know it was two. There was two. Yeah. Like, that's the kicker. Not only was it one, but there were two. <laughs> and the reason that there were two is that my lovely daughter, Evelyn. You had to take the phone away. Yeah. I had to take the phone away because she, it, was, it had become a, my own phone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Luckily, we traded that tranny jack for it. So we're square, yeah. <laughs> square could be, buddy. <laughs> But yeah, I uh, I uh, heard that old cook plunk, you know what I mean, and I thought, son of a bitch, you know what I mean. And then the woman who was helping her young child uh, use the restroom next door, the next hot box over, she goes, "Oh my god, was that your cell phone?" And then I really had to hold it back, but I let her fly, and I said, "It sure as the f- was." And then I thought, "Oh no, she was helping a child go pee," you know, like. Oh, I was fuming. I mean, I was like, oh, God, what do I do? But then I thought to myself, <clears throat> like, it's a it's a I watched a guy. Matter of fact, he's sitting in the, in the audience one time when when waterproof phones first come out. We were sitting at Double D Diner in Oakland City, Indiana, and he dropped that son of a bitch in a cup of water. And I'm like, I sure so f- hope that stuff's real. Like the whole waterproof. I went elbow deep in that blue shit and i got them phones out now how many things did you grab before the phone just i went straight to the bottom i maybe had to sweep uh, i may have had to sweep one way or the other but i got them suckers and i got them out can i ask a really important question no you can't i'm not done yet okay so i got in there and i got them phones out and i dropped them straight on the floor of the shitter like right down on the floor immediately and then i went straight for the shit paper to then wipe the blue remnants of the... So it wasn't like it was a heavily... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean... No, 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 no. I mean, you said I couldn't ask questions until you My son shit in that same port john when we first got there. So I do know for a fact that there, were hu- there was human feces in the toilet. It was in there. Like, I know it was. Now, was my son the only one to shit in there? I don't know. Can't tell you. I have there. Cannot tell you. Didn't have any uh, evidence, uh, DNA, or anything. Couldn't now, tell. how close? You're a pretty long arm fella, but how mm-hmm. deep are those? How close was your face to the seat? No way. No. Way. No. I mean, you've <laughs> seen those shit cones. Your, I feel like they're two put, and a half, three foot deep. You've seen those shit cones at uh, at like a music fest and stuff, right? Like, shit cones? yeah, like a biker rally when the porta potties are real full and they got real. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, like as you had to bend down. I feel like. So, Dave, imagine what is the standard? What's the standard height of a toilet? Oh, 18? Problem? No. Yeah, but these are deeper 18 than that. 18 inches? 36? No. no. That. This, is, God damn it. this is 32, probably. I bet 20. I bet 20, 18, 18, 18, 18, 20 inches, maybe. 20, 20 24. Maybe. And what did I say? But yeah. then you got the thickness of the ballpark. step. But, that, that, but that's just that's a skid. They're on skids. Oh, yeah. So the tank actually sits above the skids. Mm-hmm. So, the, so the seat height to the floor is probably the depth of the tank. So this... Little, I, I'm, I, I, it, was, it was probably mid-forearm for me. So here... So, I wasn't all the way up to my weenus, to my elbow. I was mid-forearm. Now, I had... I come in from... Was a, it warm? No, it was cold. Oh, it was, that's that's a, that's reassuring. Yeah, because it was it had been outside, Dave. It was well, in it the could 60s. Have been full of fresh piss. I know it was full of fresh piss because I just <laughs> pissed in it. But if it had been you warm, you mean you still completed your piss? Yes. Before. <laughs> yes, I was about to piss in my Casey. It was sixty-one degrees that morning. <laughs> it was raining, and I had to pee. <laughs> yeah. So you drop your cell phone, and then you still go to this? Well, here's the thing. Where that urinal pipe comes in, it was on the opposite side of the tank, and mine were all the way to the left. So I just went in. Anyway, how did you know it was all the way to the left? Because that's just where I I just felt there first, and I got lucky. God was was on my side. God was on my side. So So first first snag you had them. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I had to do like one sweep. out. you just like, nope, they're not there. Come back. Boom. There they are. And they were like real close to one another. So I just grabbed them up, threw them down straight to the straight to the toilet paper to get the, the blue goo off my hands, my arm. 
Now, is the blue goo, is it antibacterial or anything? I don't know what you it is. You didn't want to look Did it, it up? come off very easy? Yeah. It's, it didn't stink. Because that one TV show now, on the, the airplane, dollar bills, the guys, Evelyn, Evelyn had a few dollar bills in the back of her phone case. still blue? Yes. And I spent three of the four of them already. Oh. And I didn't tell. I, just, gosh. Just mind your business, okay? They're not. I don't have them anymore. And that's the main reason not to do cocaine, because you don't know where that dollar is. Yeah. Was. Could you imagine doing a big gagger with that blue dollar bill? <laughs> I mean, like every bit of coke that snort. I've ever done, it's always been with a hundred <laughs> or a or a windy straw because I got them vacuum lungs. Anyway, I had to go back into the port. I went back into the concession stand, which is like a yard barn with um, three really nice ladies in there, and I said, "Hey, I have a question to ask. I'm kind of at a really vulnerable spot right now, but do you have any hand sanitizer?" And they all looked at me like I had four heads. And I was like, no, they don't. We don't have it. Uh-uh, no. And I said, she's got, I got baby wipes. And I said, yep, that'll work. Well, baby wipes aren't. And she's like, what's wrong? Better than nothing. Buddy. She said, what's <laughs> wrong? And I said, well, I just dropped two cell phones in that shitter out there. And I had to go about elbow deep to get them. And she goes, oh, you know, I'd have <laughs> left that thing in there. <laughs> well, I couldn't because I run a podcast. I already had a video. Well, buddy. you didn't. You, what happens if your computer took a tank? When if my computer took a tank, we wouldn't have edited it anyway. Well, no, we would have uploaded a video onto some other thing for you to do it on. I had to do it, Dave. Yeah, you did. So I did it your, for the show. Is your? Don't be a f-ing hero. I'm not. Well, I'm not. That's why I said it. I started this whole thing off by saying I didn't want a, a, a medal. So, have you updated your hepatitis B shot? Mm-mm. First thing Dave asked was, do you have any open sores or wounds on your hand? And I was like, oh, God. (laughs) I can feel the C. diff coming as we speak. (laughs) But anyway, I cleaned up with baby wipes. And then I seen uh, they had a bottle of Lysol kitchen cleaner, like all surface cleaner, lemon scent, uh, heavy bleach. And I said, can you spray my hands with that? And she said, yep. So she gave me a good dousing of that, and I washed up my hands. Luckily, I had a half a roll of shop towels in the back of my car. So I went back, washed up with them, and then I got the bright idea of like, man, maybe she could spray them phones with that Lysol. So then I took the shitty phones back into the thing. She sprayed them down, wiped them up, then re-wiped my hands, and then just drove 10 and 2 the rest of the way home. Because there wasn't it like later to, later to my I gained the information later that there was actually a, a, a bathroom, but it was uh, mm. quite some distance from where we were. But I drove all the way home to Princeton and my face itched the whole time. And I didn't do I didn't itch it. You didn't ask Justine to scratch. She wasn't face? with me. Oh, no, we wouldn't be married anymore if she was. Yeah, she couldn't have handled that. Not a chance. She like, doesn't listen to this, so I can say this in full confidence. She couldn't have handled it. She would have lost her ever-living mind. <laughs> Not a chance. She's had her arms elbow deep in so many vaginas in her work career. Yeah. And the minute you go fishing a phone in a port shitter that's the grossest thing you could ever imagine. Well, well I kind of side with her on that. I don't, I know, don't know. I think there's, there's some fecal matter. Nasty during. pussies in this world, too. <laughs> We well, might. I think during the natural <laughs> childbirth and process, some fecal matter can escape the... Uh, well, she did a little bit more than babies, Dave, like in her job. You know what I mean? Yeah, like oh, there's yeah, some. Oh, yeah. Hey, so did yeah. you ever... So what I imagine is like fat guy in a little coat. Like, mm-hmm. did you open the door and kind of give yourself some space to move? Because that's a tight area it for you tight. to be it wrestling. Tight. and It's tight. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think I might have lost... Conf- this particular pullover... Has very it's a shallow pocketed jacket. Okay, mm-hmm. so I, I feel like that was an issue, and then also with the two phones and a sandwich stack, there was there was a lot of there wasn't any um, friction. There wasn't any like uh, thing to keep that phone in there. Like they worked together to just kind of mm-hmm. you know slide out of there, right thread in the old. Poop now, pot. did you happen to see the woman from next door that asked if it was a phone? Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you, did you have a conversation? Negative. I didn't know if you like got him. Oh, my God, did you go in there? Did you get him? Yeah. And then I th- she didn't gag, but she was just like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> she like, judged like she, the hell out of you. Oh, yeah, and that's fine. I'll never see that woman again unless we play Princeton next week. I mean, I don't, which we will. I think we play him Saturday. But 
Hey, that's the guy that. <laughs> There's your old shit surfer. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, hands. There he is. But yeah, so then my phone it didn't. I came home and bleached the piss out of them. Like I just that's got, probably healthy. Yeah, just them. bleached the shit out of them. And the back of my phone was so busted where the cameras and stuff at that it was like. <laughs> Where I was pushing it and it was like bubbling. So you know there's fecal matter that you'll never and be able to get out of bleach and shit inside the phone. And yeah. then it like went into this boot loop thing where it would just, it would, it would, it died. Like the battery was dead anyway. And then it came back on <clears throat> and then it would just show the Apple icon for five seconds and go off. Five seconds and go off. Five seconds. And they just kept doing that. And I did the whole hard reset where you do the volume up, volume down, power off type shit. Didn't work, didn't work, didn't work. So finally, I'm like, well, this phone's screwed. I'm on call. That was another thing, too. So then I have to call the call center and update my phone with the other poop phone that continued to work. I guess the XR was a little tougher than the busted up 14. Hell yeah. So anyway, long story short, I called a shuri on. Thank God I Is had... Is the XR uh, still being used? Yeah. That's interesting. But it's cleaned and sterilized. None of the kids got pink eye or anything. No. No. No C. diff. With that, that with that kind of amount, I'd be worried about other yeah, things. Yeah, but they, uh, they, we bleached the ever-living dog shit out of that. And since that phone wasn't all busted up, it didn't... Mm-hmm. I don't feel like any of that material... Pretty self-contained. Made it into the phone. You know, you know I mean? the thing of it is, what would be funny now is if you ask your daughter if she's got shit in her ears, she could really say yes. Could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Dad. Just drop it in the yeah. toilet again. But that was probably maybe like not necessarily the most stressed out I've been in a while, but it was. Why? What's if there to I be stressed known about? That I was I on had call. insurance on the phone. I was on call. I would have bypassed the entire thing. I didn't know that I had it. Oh. That was the issue. I want to think there was a time I was... And you know, if I didn't have it, it would have been like 700 bucks or 1000 bucks to get a new <laughs> phone. But if I did have insurance and let it lay, and I didn't have one to send it back, it would have been $250 versus Now, just versus talking to neighbor now. Doug, I think there's a little upgrade thing. They could they would have taken that phone and given you a 16 if you just upped your package. Well, you know, that'd have been funny to give Steve. Doesn't Doug it have to be working though? I'll be goddamn. <laughs> he could give old Steve I got that shit phone. I got hosed by the man again. Imagine that. Yeah, that's tough. Anyway, guys, that was what uh, that was a little uh, tidbit of my weekend. You think so. Taryn could design a shirt, kind of outline with Good a fat guy God. with a hand, <laughs> porter potty, and then we just put shit hands on there? <sighs> Add it to the list. <laughs> Hey, right. you know what? That's dedication, though, buddy. Yeah, yeah it is, we, and we appreciate it. Um, so as alluded to, I've got probably a pretty good like hat. I could probably take my hat off, and I'd have a pretty good tan line going on right now. Ooh. I've been fortunate to play a little golf this week. Uh, the resort is hosting the Corn Ferry Tour Championship, brought to you by United Leasing and Finance right now, which is cool, uh, and it was... It's the second time I've had the opportunity to play with a professional golfer. Uh, Tuesday of this week and uh, Thursday. And um, so it, the cool thing about it is, is first off, we know some really good golfers. Our buddy at Schultz Insurance, Derek Bowling. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, guys, you were supposed to catch that joke at Smutzler. Yeah, Smutzler. Okay, it's ran its course. Uh, you know, our buddy Teddy Hoops, like those guys are good golfers. Yeah. These guys would beat the brakes off of mm-hmm. Teddy Hoops and those guys. Yeah. They're Not pro- that I don't, I mean. They're pros. I mean, those guys as professionals, they play a lot. Teddy Hoops, Derek, they got lives now. They got kids. They run the travel circuit like you guys do, taking kids everywhere all over God's green earth. But I tell you what, if there's something you could be good at, to be a freaking stick like that would be unreal. I feel like guessing lottery numbers would be a pretty good thing to be good at. Yeah, probably. Probably better than golfing. Yeah. Yeah, but you have enjoyment when you play golf, don't you? Yeah. I wonder if out of the two pros you played with, if they tell their friends about their experiences golfing with a guy that's just lucked out to be playing with pros. They, I would imagine that the reverse of that conversation, the inverse of that conversation is, those guys were the worst. 
Those guys are the worst golfers I've ever been around. <laughs> but they all get it. They, nice uh, guy. Fun the, time. Best, the, probably the most fun thing. So this guy that we had, he's a young guy. Uh, he's a Georgia Bulldog. Two years out from school trying to make the tour. He's right there on the line. And he kind of got off to a slow start. And uh, we were on a long par five there on the front nine at the Pete Dye course. And uh, he had a good drive. And then he had like a three wood. He was like 275 out. Puts it up there on the green. Great freaking shot. And uh, goes up and hits the putt. And just being a smart ass, because he was, I don't know, you could just tell, like, he either didn't want to be there or he didn't like us. And I said, God damn, it's about time the pro f- did something. And he, <laughs> and there was kind of that pause. And then everybody started laughing. And the caddy's like, yeah, give him shit. He needs somebody. And I was like, oh, we can talk shit. So I talk shit the rest of the time. Oh, good. I'm like a 20 handicap. This guy. What happens if he tanks on the and tour. doesn't get it? Well, it's funny you I know say that. he did. You told me earlier. <laughs> so they had first round today on Thursday. And uh, we played at the Ross today with another pro. Super nice guy from Louisville. Played golf at IU. Trying to, you know, kind of make it, make it on there. He's playing some Corn Ferry events. And he's playing uh, Canadian Tour. Super nice guy. And um, so we went up to watch, and I was, I was like, oh, he's going to come in. I was like, oh, he's one over on the day. And then on 17, he had a double bogey mm. and uh, three over right now to finish Yikes. the round. But, uh, yeah, they got it all set up. It's nice. It's neat. It's cool. Uh, but to play golf with those guys, they just – it's a freaking unbelievable skill set. That's insane, man. They uh, – when we went down there to uh, Vic last year and watched them play – yeah, they make that game look easy, and it's not. Like we well, all, we can all attest that it's not easy to play. Well, and this like this guy, he ain't no bigger than neighbor Doug, but he's yeah. driving a golf ball three hundred plus yards. Like he's, I mean, neighbor Doug might be bigger than what this other guy is, mm-hmm. and he just it's all about grips club, and rips it. Club helps Shoot, I drive twenty miles to work every morning. No big deal. Yeah, that's yeah, good. No big deal. Uh, what kind of uh, spending spree did you get to go on? Oh, uh, what, pretty good. What'd you wind up with this year, there, Princess? Uh, new Scotty Cameron putter. What? Oh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. New three wood. Well, because I played in two technically, so I had two cards. Uh huh. God, you know I had something today. I said something. There was a part time guy. And he only worked, they're only allowed to work like 29 hours a week or something like that. Used you know? to be 32. Now it's 29. Well, 32 is full time now, huh? Yeah. Permanent part time. I tell you what, I don't know. Who, I don't know who pissed in your Cheerios today, Dave, but you're a little snarky. I like it. <laughs> Truth hurts, bud. But anyway, so he's clocking out at like, I think it was noon or he was, yeah, it was noon. He was leaving at lunch today because he had got his weekend already. Oh, yeah. And uh, I said, God damn, doesn't it? Doesn't it ever just irk you to the core how much you take advantage of this place? Like, how do you sleep at night? I mean, I think after after so many weeks of just effing their eyes out, I just I just start feeling bad. You know, maybe start working a little bit more. You know, and Did you he know, turn, how, how, he turned around. And he, you know, he gave me some kind of like fat joke or you know, hello like, pot you, meat you, kettle. Yeah, like you've been effing their eyes out for the last five years or you know something. You've like been with that. the city five years almost. Yeah, November second will be. But uh, half a decade. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I kind of feel the same way about you, like with this whole like pro am golf experience thing. Like, are you ever gonna just like feel bad about it? Or uh-uh. no, no, yeah. Well, I mean, would you expect anything? I'm the guy that won't apologize for passing a funeral procession. Like, you think I'm gonna feel bad Touché. about it? Touche. You know, it just it yeah. is what it is. It's yeah. just uh, it's one of the perks of the job. Mm-hmm. So, how did you play? Fairly well, decent. I can't putt worth a shit. Yeah. Did you play your own ball? It's so it's a shamble style. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Now what's so, that mean again? Yeah. So a shamble. Everybody drives. Everybody drives, but then you play your own ball in, and then you take the net best ball. So if you and I, mm. so if we were all playing, and then we picked up uh, neighbor Doug and and J Love, and Love's our pro, we could use his drive mm-hmm. if we needed to. Because the idea of it is, is the pro may be a little bit further back, but they're going to hopefully hit the fairway. Mm-hmm. So then we all tee off. We take the best ball out of that drive, all of us, and then we hit our second shots and we play from there. And so I wish 
like I wish up here, like Honeybird Country Club, like they would do a shamble style where you play best netball, but you can for like a lot of times for high handicappers, your struggle is getting off the tee box. You go OB a lot off the tee box or you got a shitty drive. So if you can be decent with a wedge or an iron in your hands, you can put up some pretty good scores. Like we went on Tuesday, we went 22 under. And then today we were 24 under. And so, but it, what it is, is like, I'm getting a pop on every hole. So if we end up being like 90 to hundred yards out or where I have like a wedge in Mm -hmm. and you get there, I'm sitting there basically net one. So I've got two putts to make a birdie. So realistically, and they even set like par, like I think they'll even set like pars the limit because you, if you're not parring the hole, like you just keep it moving, but it's fun. It's a fun way to play. But then like at the die, cause I was excited about it and I was like, Oh, get a play scramble up there at the die. It'll be great. And then I was like, Oh, it's a shamble. And that means I'll have to play all day, but, and it makes it fun to a certain extent because like if you get off into the weeds and you're like, hey, I'm not going to be able to make par. You just pick up and you just finish out the hole with those guys. Right. It just it's it's a little bit quicker than a scramble, but uh, it's got to. Everybody has to have a handicap when you do it, so that's the only bad thing because like you don't know what your handicap is. It's anxiety. Uh, <laughs> Morbid obesity. <laughs> there we go. Uh, probably. OCDC a little bit. Mm-hmm. OCDC. OBCD. No, not obesity. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. But he's a super nice guy. And then the guy we played with today, you could tell, like, and it's funny because you can tell, like, the difference a little bit in players. And, it, and I'm not a golf expert, but you could tell, like, the guy we played with on Tuesday, much, much better golfer. Nothing against the guy we played with today. And we actually told him about the show. He's like, well, shit, I spent a lot of time in the car. I might listen. But you could tell, like, there's just a little bit. But, it, like, it's hard to figure out what it is. Like, is it consistency off the tee? Like, is it better putting or wedges in your hand? Like, it's – but, like, the guy we played with today, like, it was just – I mean – So, when you say we, who's we? For, like, Tuesday, just other resort, like, associates that played. So, executive staff. So, like, Tuesday was our – Director of Hotel Operations at West Baden, Director of IT, myself, and then uh, Chris Treader, who owns Salton Run. Salton's Run was our fourth. And then uh, they got a lot of big things going on over there, too. And then uh, today it was me, friend of the program, Tyler Jordan, um, uh, our uh, security manager, Paco, and then Spencer Whitehead, who's Director of Food and Beverage and Hotel Operations at French Lake. Have you been seeing Red around quite a bit? Yeah, they're so busy right now. Oh, yeah, I bet. He, those guys, like, they were busy last week, and then this week kicks in, and they're just as busy. Game time. Yeah, they are. But they, he's, uh, you know, Sunday, kind of like last year, when we get to, like, their big thing is selling the pro-ams and that kind of stuff, because that's where they make their money. Yeah. And then, like, as the golf tournament kind of takes off, it's, it's an operations are we anxiety. Going on Sunday? Yeah, we should be good. So, but it's fun if you guys ever get a chance to play in a pro am. Oh, I'm sure you know I've been turning it down. Yeah, all these no shit. Like I get, I have had so many people ask me just to play. So busy. I just, Listen, if the podcast got into the cash, we guys, could unload uh, it. You know, I'd love to come and spend you know six thousand dollars of somebody else's money on probably golf. Ten thousand dollars on golf. Well, no, we would need probably ten to get to play in them. Ten a piece. Uh, no, just 10 oh. total. Unless Red would cut us a deal. Hell, we got that now. Times five. You would really be upset we get to the end of the year, and you're like, hey, what's my third? <laughs> well. Remember that? Hey, remember that? Hey, remember that? <laughs> <laughs> program we played in? So. Hell, yeah. That's it. Brother Dave. Wait. Before we get minute. to you, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause. Brought to you by our buddy, Chad Blessinger of Blessinger Insurance. At Blessinger Insurance, Chad Blessinger works to provide personalized local insurance solutions that you can count on. From auto and home to farm and business coverage, Chad works with trusted carriers to offer policies that fit your unique needs. With decades of experience in serving Dubois County and the surrounding southern Indiana area, Chad is dedicated to protecting what matters most to you. 
Whether you're seeking personal or commercial insurance, Chad is here to help. Give Chad a call today and see what he can do for you. And we're back. And we're back. Big thank you to our buddy, Chad. Uh, you know, it was wild at Holland Fest. He was buying us beers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he bought a couple beers. Yeah, he did. For us. Which, you know, good we, guy. Yeah, guy. we appreciate guy. that. Real good guy. Yeah. Overboard. Those guys are still alive, hopefully. Mm-hmm. I mean, they haven't called in a while. They haven't wrote. Well, they're probably just, you know, busy. busy. Yeah. Recovering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably yeah. so. Hard night. Dave? Uh, Chief Dave? <clears throat> brother? I did. I look over your back shoulder there, and uh, uh, Chief Sitting Horse is back there. Sitting Horse. Oh, yeah. Jenna got me a concrete Indian chief that's out in front of the garage door too yeah smoking a piece and then i got a little bust indian chief bust you probably seen that after the thing he's in the house on the book show so the walking stick hey like, brother do you get into like bad shape and you just kind of stumble around with the walking stick uh, do a little you know, rain I, just, I feel like rafiki from lion king oh like if the kids we act gotta up, get like I'll a, just bash the f- out of we it. gotta get a gourd <laughs> like a gourd and swing it from some leather on there yeah, yeah. yeah. there we go it's time or maybe like a oh uh you know hog nut sack or something i can turn into a little coin purse mm, i like it yeah what you got buddy uh so it's on the internet it might be bullshit but it looks pretty real and i just don't know how i feel about it but there's this startup and they're selling sunlight and I think when I first hear this, I think to myself, I said, self, how the hell you sell sunlight? What are they going to do next? I thought it was like a government thing. But what they've done is they got satellites with mirrors. And in the middle of the night, you give them your coordinates. And they move them satellites around for the date that you pick and the time you pick. And they beam, they, they bounce and reflect sunlight down. And it's like a five-foot square. And you can buy sunlight for a short amount of time. And they just point the satellites to you, allegedly. It's supposed to kick off like uh, spring of 2025, I think. And I just, I feel like... Get out of here. Well, I, I, I mean, I didn't like vet this out. Like, I didn't look up their board of directors and call. But it's it's pretty easy to find. Is, is Brother Elon involved in this? I don't think so. I feel like that's a little out. bit out of his... Uh, he doesn't have time for that sort of... Uh, well, he's bailing out the federal government. He's giving them Starlink over there in Western North Carolina. And a California-based startup is currently working on something. Oh, it sunlight. comes out of California. To so so did Elon Musk. During That's the true. nighttime by using mirrors on a satellite to reflect it down to Earth. According to their site, satellites are going to launch into space into 2025. You can now get online to buy sunlight for the last quarter of next year. For a duration of four minutes and a radius of five kilometers, oh. which in just two days got more than 30,000 applicants. So there's five a, kilometers there's is a YouTube, three miles. There's a YouTube mm-hmm. video. It says this is this was actually taken at 3 a.m. Yeah, it looks What's like there's just like? a big spotlight on them. Yeah, literally that. Right there. Just a spotlight. It's wild. That's dumb. I'm not gonna pay for it. How much do you think it costs? Oh, it's probably. I mean, if they're up there, if they're up there squirting the god dang satellites around to get sun in, I mean, shoot. I tell you what. What did it cost to get in on Sirius XM when that first started? That was probably a thousand bucks. I bet you it's like six grand just to get your name on the list. You reckon? Oh yeah. About has to be. So are, are you gonna do it or are you no, out? No, no, I don't like. I don't want anything to do it. I just. <laughs> I'm on the fence here. I'm, I'm a pretty, like, you know, the technology is a good thing, but there's just some of this shit just really just kind of weirds me out, man. Well, when because are we Because if get- we can do that, if you can, if I can say, here's my address, I want you to beam some sunlight in here at 2 a.m. Huh. on October 3rd, 2027, and they say, we got you, what's to keep them from lasering my house in half? Or keep Putin over there from taking them over and blinding a bunch of young children out just trying to enjoy their evening. I was playing looking, kick the can. trying to find yeah. this, the costs I, of this, and it brought me to a tanning website called Midnight Sun when the beaches are just out of reach. Now, them sons of bitches up there uh, <laughs> in the very tippy top that have, you know, darkness for eight months out of the year yeah. or something. Now, you think there'd be a public service to give them SOBs a little vitamin Now, would D. there be... Now, because when those people are... When it's winter up there, that they're tilted away from the sun. Mm-hmm. Take more satellites. 
I was going to say, how would you do that? Because we couldn't, I mean, if you live right in the heartland like we do, it's probably easier. But if you start going to the fringe areas, I would find it to be more difficult, right? Yeah. You might be able to cool the world down if you do it during the daytime and point that sun somewhere else because it's nighttime somewhere when it's daytime here. Yeah. You know, down there around the equator. You know, it would be a hell of a prank. Maybe do this to neighbor Doug, even though he's in the room. Put in neighbor Doug's coordinates. Well, it's three miles. Oh, well, yeah, you're trapped. So there. it's everybody in uh, all the HJB. Uh, oh, yeah. Pretty well all good. That really causes stir. What do you mean it's three miles? Five kilometers is ish. Three you know, miles. hey, I'm going to go run a 5K. It's 3.1 miles. Really? You? Well, that's what you said. Yeah. Huh. Did you say like a five kilometer now, area? It might be cool to do for like a. I don't know what it said. Uh, you know, five o'clock somewhere party or something and have like uh, everybody around at like two in the morning. It'll be daytime for four minutes and just turbo chug a bunch of drinks or something. You know, that's kind of like the hubbub about the uh, eclipse this year. Mm hmm. You know, kind of the same theory. Yeah, I think I told somebody in California they were trying to do the thing. I was like, out here it's so far away that you can actually look at it with your eyes. In California, it doesn't do anything because it's that far. Yeah. They did. Uh, I was really just f***ing <laughs> with them because <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. Uh, uh, so how did you stumble onto this? Uh, talking to a guy at work, he's like, do you hear about how they're selling sunlight? And Because he knows I get all worked up about government stuff. I was probably bitching about the government. And uh, <laughs> no, oh, then we decided that you, it buddy. wasn't the government, unless it's just a yeah. But how can you just you still have to go through a permitting process? What permitting? Who would have you to mean you could you could neighbor Doug could shoot a satellite up? No, no, god dang okay. it, we talked about this, and yes, he can, and you can get licenses to do it. And there's only certain times and places you can, but if there's enough money back in it, they'll, they'll, it'll let anybody shoot one up there. You just got to say what it's for. And they're probably like, oh, it's just scientific uh, mm -hmm. exploration of our uh, near Earth atmosphere. And, uh, you know. So when do we get worried about the space junk? It's already a thing. There's already a program for the space junk, managing space junk. Like uh, when they crash that one. Uh, that one ship into Saturn's moon, it's because they were going to lose control of it and they didn't want it to get outside of our space and like negatively impact some potential other life form. Like say there was like the whooping cough on it or something because oh, somebody yeah. snuck in and coughed on a component. Mm -hmm. So they intentionally shit crashed it into Saturn's moon because they knew there was re relatively no probability of there ever being life there. So what about the people living on Saturn's moon that this had this apocalyptic event? I mean, yeah, they're pretty much dicked. Uh, that's what happened. Or maybe like a few centuries go by and then we, you know, it gets into our... Comes back around and gets us. And they're like, oh man, how these pyramids get here? It's just a petrified spaceship. Oh, shit. Oh my God, David. Where'd you get that at? Just pulled it out of my head right now. No, you didn't. Whoa. You dove into a rabbit hole. No Don't rabbit you dare hole. hold out on us. No, there's no rabbit holes yet, but we'll get into them later. But anyway, that was that was my thing. I was just getting all bent out of shape about if you can point sunlight to the dark and satellites and Putin and lasers and just a matter of time. Amen to that. Reflect Orbital. Is that the company's name? Could be. I've been trying to find some stuff. You think we got enough listeners out there that I can just start dropping hints about like mailing Putin poop? Like I think it'd be real funny to like just air <laughs> mail. What are those uh, Cola Guard kits? Oh yeah, and just put the return address of like Putin's desk on there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, pal. Hey, it's time for the Merkley and Sons Choice Cut Questions of the Week for the fellows. Brought to you by Merkley and Sons. It's chili season, baby. Our buddies at Merkley and Sons should be your first stop this chili season. One, you can get the meats you need for your chili and probably some seasonings too. The second reason, you can get some of those extra things that go well with a bowl of chili. Like, for instance, you can have a good old thick slice of cracker bologna, a snap dog, a frank, or even a Merkley seasoned patty on the side of your chili. Some may say that chili soup is enough of a meal itself. Well, those people probably don't enjoy life. Get over to Merkley's today and see the fellas and get what you need for chili season. 
All right, fellas. We have snuck into October, as today is October 3rd uh, in real time. So some October-themed questions. All right. Uh, bigger fan of pumpkin spice or apple cider? Ooh, I don't know, man. I like. I kind of I can get down on that basic white bitch stuff and uh, throw which it one's in. basic white the bitch? pumpkin yeah the pumpkin oh, okay. spice it's like Han Solo season you know what I mean like where they got you got do you the, have your brown leather boots ready no I don't own any of those <laughs> but I'm just in, yeah well I do yeah I used to be a good uh, Minnetonka they were a good brand uh yeah I have a pumpkin spice apple cider I'm an apple cider guy too. Haunted houses, hay rides, or corn mazes? The hell with them corn mazes. That's dumb as shit. Uh, I'm a big bitch, so like haunted houses are really not my thing. But uh, I could get down on a good hay ride. Hopefully, hopefully we can do that too. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Yeah, I'm a hay ride guy. I can't tell you the last time I was on a hay ride. It's probably unsurprising. I'm probably out on all those. Because I haven't been on a hayride in forever to say that. I've been damn. Yeah. You know, when you say that, I don't know how to take that, obviously. What do you mean? Well, you know what I mean. He doesn't, you know. Because how you say it? Being a smart ass. Oh, which, by the way, it was funny today. So we were standing on, <laughs> we finished on nine mm-hmm. at Donald Ross. And that's when the podcast came up. And they're like, oh, you know. And and uh friend of the program, Tyler Jordan, looked back. He goes, yeah, I love it when they make fun of Big Fella back there. I you? Go, well, Tyler you man <laughs> uh how many pumpkins yeah, that asshole talking shit back there <laughs> that's some of the princeton porta john yeah out. there it is the great it's, princeton porta john yeah. incident mm. how many pumpkins is too many pumpkins to decorate with oh the more the merrier and then when they rot down you can throw them in your yard and get your volunteer pumpkin i seen old will billy with his prize pumpkin yeah, he was pretty happy with that well that's cool shit man what happened we had a volunteer pumpkin pop up in the yard. Right over here by the old uh, pool. He already harvested it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back. It was getting pretty weedy. It hadn't been oh, mowed. And, oh, that know. was nice of you not to mow it over. Yeah, well, we had to see how far it'd go. He's, he's got a nice size. So is he going to sell it, carve it, keep uh, it? I What's think it gonna... got stuck on one of these stacks of pumpkins. We got We got like three or four stacks of pumpkins here. Oh, so you, you were all in on the fall. Oh yeah, uh, uh, they, Mrs. Smoker's a big pumpkin they've went stacker. To, they went to the... Uh, Chandelier barn market and uh, got a bunch of those stacking pumpkins, those flat bastards that are just going to rot from the top down. Okay. Yeah, we got them too. I think that's where our uh, table uh, oh. adornment. Hey, by from. the way, friend of the program, Curdy G, said nice centerpiece there. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Told him we were fall guys. Yeah, we're yeah. fall guys. Um, you know, Janelle's not into that shit. Like, she's not into the whole Probably decorating thing. because you don't let her. My wife is free to do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> Uh, trick or treat candy. Are you the type to share or do you hoard? I'm a hoarder. Yep. Same with parade. I'm a, I'm a taxer. You know, I let the kids keep their bounty, but, uh, I get first pick because this is my castle and, uh, the huh. peasants will pay the tax. King of the castle. King of the <laughs> castle. La, 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 la. Uh, movie marathon. You going horror classics or cheesy Halloween specials? Ooh. I like a good classic horror, Rur. Uh, but I, I'm kind of a big bitch when it comes to them too. Like I don't know. There's this new one out. Well, it came out in July with Nicolas Cage, The Long Legs. You seen the trailer for that? Jesus Christ! I think I'd ball like a baby on that one. But I don't know. I like Hocus Pocus. I mean, that's a good one. Janelle was watching it. I came down from doing some stuff upstairs. I was like, what movie is this? And she goes, Hocus Pocus. I go, what are you doing watching Hocus Pocus? She goes, well, ABC Family has started their 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, They're doing a viewing of that at the uh, Market Street that we're going to be going to. October 11th. Are you really going? Oh, yeah. Jen is all fired up. We're going to go watch Hocus Pocus in the streets. Yeah. You sound thrilled. It's Haunted Huntingburg, right? Isn't that that part of Haunted? I mean, it could be. Yeah. Just know that Dave's going to be there socializing with everybody. We might get one of those igloos. Oh, God, those are expensive. Well, you know, they look like big, clear pumpkins. So why not be the uh, jackasses in the lantern, you know what I mean? Yeah. You uh, really sound excited about yeah, that. Yeah, I am, I am. I tell you what Halloween movie I haven't seen in a while, and I guess I just need to find it and buy it, because I think the kids would enjoy it. 
but Ern is scared stupid. Yeah, that's a great, that's bro, a great that's Halloween a good one. Flick. Uh, we would watch that at Grandma Lois's, like underneath the steps, like her steps going downstairs. Her basement was finished out. We'd build like a fort with Afghans and like watch it through the steps. The covers, not the people. The spookies. Yeah. Just one Russian Meek. Yeah. Didn't think I'd find it this time of year. <laughs> yeah. I like like the original um, Halloween. Um, really? Like with Jamie Lee Curtis? Like those like super classics like that? Really? Not too, too terribly much. But are, was there a titty in that one? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably why. I was. think so. Yeah. Jamie think, Lee? Jamie Lee Curtis's tits? I, th- I thought there was a movie with her Maybe. tits. We'd have to get our best. What was, that one? was it? Was there a show called Creep Show back in the day that was like a bunch of short movies? Tales from the Crypt. No, no, no. There was that, too. They had that the Crypt Keeper guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the one, a Creep Show had like a narrator. Like this dude got buried in the sand, and then the crabs came in and like ate his face off. Oh, Oh yeah, that was a good one. I remember watching that when I was a little fella. There's a scary TV show. program on the local Me TV mm-hmm. called Sven Gulli on Saturday, and he he does like old, like classic sci fi yeah, horror. There movies. it is, Dave Creep Show. Yep, it was uh, seventy eight or eighty six somewhere. You know, somewhere in that uh, decade, nineteen eighty two. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, you're right on the money. Favorite fall food. Mm. Chili soup or chili, no noodles, chili. Uh, yeah, I was hoping to make chili this weekend, but it's gonna be like 80 degrees in the daytime, so I can't. Yeah, chili's probably top of the list there. So, there we go, those are this week's choice cut questions of the week for the fellas. Brought to you by Merkley and Sons. Get over there and see the fellas. Fellas, time for some final thoughts. Could be something from the episode, something you're looking forward to on Friday. That's brought to you by Southern Indiana Hardwoods. Southern Indiana Hardwoods is kind of like a Swiss Army knife. They sell the Green Mountain pellet grills. They sell the accessories for the grills. They sell the amazing pellets. And guess what? They also sell heating pellets. Listen, there's more than one way to keep warm in the upcoming cold season. One of them is with Southern Indiana Hardwoods heating pellets. Reach out to Nick today and see how you can better utilize this alternative heating source. All right, big fella. Uh, like I said in the ice cold opener. Um, just, oh, we didn't have an ice cold opener. Okay. What I said in the beginning of the show there uh, that was not the ice cold opener, uh, the part that was brought to you by Lights by Logan, Um I don't know. Just T's and P's to those people up in the hills of uh, North Carolina, whole Rocky Top, Tennessee, and everybody up there, man. Um, couldn't imagine what you guys are going through, and uh, hope it all shakes out. Uh, yeah, I ain't got shit. Work's been work. Uh, he mowed half the grass, didn't mow the other half today. Afternoon plans just didn't materialize to mow. I mean, I probably could have mowed, but I didn't mow. Yeah. Uh, Watch some (laughs) Star Wars cartoons. Nice. (laughs) And uh, drove kids around. A lot of kid driving at night. Mm -hmm. Three or four trips till uh, the school complex over there. Like, when you do that, how... How? What is the duration of time that they have to like? Tonight was a game, right? Mm-hmm. For, for Weston, mm-hmm. right? So, like, instead of driving back and forth, have you ever thought about just like camping out there and like just watching? Uh, it? no. Oh, okay. No, I don't live that far. Jesus, that sounds awful. I went and stayed there one time because William wanted to kick a soccer ball. Yeah. God, we spent. It was during that damn thing. Yeah, I know. I remember. There was a bunch of tents around the outside, and Jenna yeah. was like, oh, yeah, the school's going to be there. It's like a school thing. And it uh-huh. was a school thing, but it wasn't for, like, Holland first graders. No, it was. <clears throat> but Weston was there having a good time, so we just kicked a soccer ball for, like, an hour and a freaking half. Well, you have a kid with you, so there you go. That that negates yeah. what I was going to suggest, but, like, I. Oh, you mean, like, take a 12-pack, sit in the bed of the truck? Uh, no, not on <laughs> school property, but, like, I'll I'll, I'll take <laughs> naps. I'll take a nap. Like I usually go there. I get off at three thirty. Evelyn doesn't get done till four forty five, and I'm not driving all the way to Holland and then coming back to get her and then going back uh, home again. So I'll just go there. Yeah, like I uh, and I just kind of like take a nap. 
or TikTok or I had a pick. Nope, I had a drop west and off at five fifteen. Picked Wyatt up because he stayed after school. You didn't drop west and off at five fifteen. Dropped him off at five. You dropped him off at about four thirty. Dropped Weston off at about 4.30, picked Wyatt up. Then Wyatt had to be back at 6 for baseball, and then he had to be picked back up at 7.30, and then Weston got home. At 9. At 9. Yeah. Yeah. Wild, uh, wild. But soccer's over, so I feel like we normally had a soccer practice on a Thursday. So, you know, and uh, yeah, but no, I don't want to stay there. Yeah. I don't want to stay there. I get it. What about you, big fellow? Uh, you know, been a good week. Got to play golf. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Got some other perks of the position. It's been busy leading up to this. A lot of moving parts, uh, but able to get it done. But just, uh, you know, all that stuff going on, that could easily be us with a tornado or something like that. And uh, the good old American spirit about helping your neighbor out. You, I love hearing those good stories about, uh, you know, neighbors helping neighbors in that situation. And that's good because that's what it is. And that's, uh, you know, something that a lot of places don't have, uh, especially big city living and other things like that. They don't give two shits about you. But uh, out here in our little rural community of Holland and Huntingburg and surrounding areas, Jasper, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, even up there in the northeast part of the county, like I'd have no doubt in my mind that neighbors would step in and help uh, help somebody out. So. It's a good thing about living here. So that's it. There we go. And with that, big thank you to our friends at the Gaslight Lights by Logan, Bless Your Insurance, Merkley & Sons, and, of course, Southern Indiana Hardwoods. Wouldn't be able to do it without them. Check them out. Uh, Smoke tags them all in there, and so does Big Mace. Get up there and have a pizza at the Gaslight. Get your house decorated by Lights by Logan. Everything down from the bottom there. And that's it, fellas. Let's do it. We're going to be back on Friday. Dutchman out.